Let's discuss what happens when we're trying to estimate costs for materials, for goods, for pieces of equipment, and anything like that that may be used in our, in our chemical plant design or in any process design that we will be dealing with. So many times you will call vendors and you will ask for quotes uh, for a specific piece of equipment or for service or thing like that. And uh, to keep calling vendors is time consuming for both, uh, both parties. And what people do instead of uh, doing so, they'll take a cost that they were given, say, say you called uh, Sigma uh, in 2018 and asked about uh, getting a centrifuge and they told you it was, I don't know, $10,000. Instead of calling today again and wasting everyone's time because it doesn't take five minutes to give you the, that figure, you can actually extrapolate what the cost would be using what is called a cost index. And this is an index that is periodically updated. Uh, and there are several sources, but the uh, most commonly used one is that of the SEPSI, which is the Chemical Engineering Cost Index. And basically, to get the present cost based on the base cost, you will just uh, use the ratio of uh, the, the years that, uh, the, the, that you're interested in. So I'm giving you here the SEPSI from 1993 to 2001, which was a long, long time ago. But uh, let's say you wanted to know the cost of this centrifuge in 1999, and you happen to call in 1995, you will just multiply the, the cost that you had already by 391 divided by 381, and that will give you the present cost, an extrapolation of sorts. Right, and that is an interesting type thing. And uh, these aggregation numbers that you're seeing here, the the cost indices that you're seeing, then that, that is dependent on uh, the chemical engineering sector as a whole. And not not only do chemical engineers use these indices, other industries use them as well. Mechanical engineers will use them. You could use them. Uh, civil engineers will use them. And even outside of engineering, uh, this dictates the healthy. Uh, status of the sector. So as you can see here, the numbers go up, they tend to go up, which means that there is some growth in the chemical engineering sector. And you could, you could probably say between 93 and 94, something major uh, and good happened. Whereas between 1996 and 1997, um, it, things stagnated, 95 to 96 is quite, quite the same. So nothing Nothing specifically good happened in the sector necessarily. And so the prices in 95 will be about the same as 1996. Uh, but uh, as things go up, uh, this indicates uh, health, the, the healthiness of, of the sector, of the chemical engineering sector. And they do tend to go up, though sometimes they do go down. And you can go look up SEPSI tables for specific years, all right? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are other indices you can use. Uh, there's the Nelson Farrar Refinery Construction Index, as you can see, this is specifically for refineries. So people who deal with refineries and the oil, the oil business will tend to use the NF factor. There's the Marshall and Swift Equipment Cost Index, which unfortunately uh, stopped publishing a thing in 2013 or 14. Uh, and uh, there are there are other there are others. And uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics may give you other indices for other sectors outside of chemical engineering. And I will note that you should not use these indices to estimate anything about this year because the accuracy diminishes. And again, all the, all the, the equations I'm going to give you, a lot of the equations, and I'm going to point them out, a lot of the equations I'm going to give you today are not what you're used to. They're not set in stone. They're not based on theory. They're not based on mathematical uh, uh ideation. It's not based on observation. This is specifically empirical and it is used for estimation. So this is not a gospel. This is just an estimation that you're going to use to get the present cost based on a base cost. Note that your the present cost that you'll pay may be different. It'll, you'll probably be in the right ballpark, but it will be a little bit different. Okay. Now, uh, in addition to changing the years, uh, you can also change the capacity of your piece of equipment, okay? Now, they'll give you a free on board price when you call a vendor. And it does not include things like delivery, installation, and, and overhead, and other things like that, okay? But that's fine. We can take this free on board 
price of equipment, and we can estimate what happens if you double the capacity of the equipment, or triple the capacity of the equipment, and things like that. So, uh, let's say you have a uh, you you're, you're talking about uh, a specific uh, uh, centrifuge that can only hold I don't know one liter, and you know you want to know how much it would cost if it was two liters. You can apply this formula and figure that out. Okay. There is a uh, an exponent, exponent exponent here m, which in absence of data you will take to be 0.6. Okay, and we're going to use this in in uh, in an example in a second. You can see how this would work. Okay, uh, there's there are tables you could use to actually get more accurate uh, exponents. So uh, let's say you were talking specifically about uh, a uh, centrifugal blower. The exponent will be 0.59. If you're talking about a centrifugal fan of this capacity, you're using you're using 1.17 and so on and so forth. But you can see many of them kind of hover around 0.6, and that's why we use 0.6 as a general uh, heuristic. Again, not gospel at all. This is just an estimation. Okay, let's look at an example. I have a 0.2 meter cube glass line reactor, and it was $10,000 in 1991. I want to know how much it will cost me. Well. I will estimate how much it will cost me uh, in 1996, but now instead of having a 0.2 meter cube reactor, I have a 1.2 meter cube reactor. Okay, so first of all, I'm changing the capacity, and second, I'm changing the year. So I'm going to use both of these, both this relation and this relation to get this, and I will also use the sepsi indices for those years, okay? So uh, here it is. In 1991, the Marshall and Swift index was given as this, and in 1996, it was given as this, okay? So I am not changing the capacity yet. I'm only changing the year. So the cost of, of my original reactor in 1996, based on the 1991 value, uh, will just be the index in 96 divided by the index in 91 times the cost in 91. And to remind you, the cost in 91 was $10,000. And so it's $10,000 times the ratio of the indices. And so I can say that in 1996, uh, this is around how much this thing would cost me to buy if it was 0.2 meter cubed. Now, I'm also changing the capacity. So I should use this relation right here. I'm changing the capacity to get the cost of the equipment. So uh, in changing the capacity, I'm going to use the exponential rule. And this is a... Uh, glass line reactor and if i go here i will look for a reactor that is glass lined okay and that is 0.54 as the exponent so i can use that because i happen to have the the table so the 0.54 exponent and i'm changing the capacity so the cost of the higher capacity divided by the cost of the lower capacity is equal to the higher capacity divided by the lower capacity raised to that exponent is how you would do that. And so the cost of this would be uh, around $29,000. And that's 